Just go. Okay. Good morning. Welcome to St. Monica's. We kindly ask that you would turn off all cell phones and mobile devices during Mass. Thank you. Today, we celebrate the 21st Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our presider and homilist today is Father Raymond Lafontaine. Due to regulations, we ask that during Mass, you refrain from singing the hymns. This is an opportunity to really meditate on the words of the hymns. We kindly ask that all parents keep their children in the pews at all times. Please stand for the opening hymn. All the creatures of our God and King Lift up your voice and with us sing Hallelujah, Alleluia Opening sun with golden Buongiorno a tutti. A special welcome to all of you who are here present in the church today, and also a special welcome to all of you who are following our live stream now at 11 a.m., not 10 a.m., because we're actually live streaming. I'd like to say a very special thank you to Ian and Mark and the technical team for all the hard work that they've done to allow us to celebrate Mass in live time and to uh, create that connection between the community worshiping here in church and all those who are worshiping from home. We are all members of the body of Christ together, and that is what counts. And of course, we gather today um, with our hearts filled with the memory of Father Bertoli, whose funeral mass was celebrated yesterday, who is such a dearly beloved member of our community and who will be so, so missed. Um, possiamo anche ricordare oggi di del nostro amico, Padre Bertoli, che ha fatto 54 anni in questa parrocchia e siamo molto grati per la sua presenza in mezzo a noi durante tanto tempo. So as we celebrate this Mass today, let us think of Father Bert in a special way. He always sat in that corner right near where Teresa is standing right now, and we know that from heaven he is looking down on us and celebrating with us. And so, dear friends, we are gathered in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, may the love of God, may the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. In the gospel today, Jesus asks his disciples a very fundamental question. And you, who do you say that I am? Jesus calls us and asks us the same question. How will we respond? Let us open our hearts to Jesus and his mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Messiah, God's anointed one. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the Son of the living God. Christ, have mercy. Lord, 
Lord Jesus, you give eternal life to all who believe in you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Lord, be to God in the We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people good will. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. Let us pray. Loving God, you cause the minds and hearts of your faithful to unite in a single purpose. Grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. And let us now listen to the word of God. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord God of hosts, go to the steward to Shebna, who is master of the household, and say to him, I will trust you from your office, and you will be pulled down from your post. On that day, I will call your, my servant Eliakim, son of Hilkiah, and will clothe him with your robe and bind your sash on him. I will commit your authority to his hand, and he shall be a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. I will place on his shoulder the key of the house of David. He shall open, and no one shall shut. He shall shut, and no one will open. I will fasten him like a peg in a secure place, and he will become a throne of honor to the house of his ancestors. The word of the Lord. Thank you. Your steadfast love, O oh Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the word your hands. I give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the angels I sing your praise. I bow down toward your holy temple and give thanks to your name for your steadfast love and your faithfulness. Your steadfast love, O oh Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the work of your hands. For you have exalted your name and your word above everything. 
On the day I called, you answered me. You increased my strength of soul. Your steadfast love, O oh Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the work of your hands. For though the Lord is high, he regards the lowly. But the haughty he perceives from far away. Your steadfast love, O oh Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the work of your hands. Your steadfast love, O oh Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdoms and knowledge of God. How un unsearchable are his judgments and how inscrutable his ways. For whom has known the mind of the Lord? Or who has been his counselor? Or who has given a gift to him to receive a gift in return? For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be the glory forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. Then Jesus said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then Jesus sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Christ. And this, my brothers and sisters, is the Gospel of the Lord.
Who do you say I am? That question rings through the centuries. And indeed, today's gospel is a challenging text. One of the things that you do when you prepare a homily is often look at the alternate versions in the other gospels. And when I read the same gospel in Luke, we're told that it was when Jesus was praying alone that he turned and asked his disciples these questions about his identity. I began to wonder if Jesus was supposed to be alone, what were his disciples doing there? But then I asked a deeper question. How was Jesus' sense of his identity shaped within the depths of his prayer? You know, when we're just sailing through life, moving busily from one activity to another without taking any time to reflect, it's easy to sidestep those deeper questions about who we are, about the quality of our relationships with others and with God. And then something happens. I think for our community, the illness and death of our beloved Father Bertoli, his funeral mass yesterday, something happens that forces us to ask more ultimate and more eternal questions. Jesus' commitment to prayer and to his relationship with God and what happens when we invite God into our hearts and lives allows those questions to surface in us as well. And Jesus asks a two-part question. The first part is a safer, more generic question. Who do the crowd say that I am? It's less threatening because it's less engaging. It allows the disciples to keep a safe distance away and to answer in the third person impersonal form. Now, if Jesus were to ask us that question today, what might we answer? And then we might answer in the past tense. 2,000 years ago, who did people think Jesus was? And the scholars of the historical Jesus movement provide us with a variety of answers. For some people, Jesus of Nazareth was a dangerous heretic who was upsetting the people with unorthodox ideas about God and the law of Moses. For others, Jesus was an eschatological prophet preaching an impending kingdom of God. And for yet others, Jesus was an itinerant preacher, a miracle worker, a religious reformer, or a political subversive. But for those who became the first Christians, Jesus was what Peter responds today. He is the Christ, God's anointed one, the Son of the living God. As Bishop Robert Barron likes to point out, we can either take Jesus' claims of divine origin absolutely seriously, or we can dismiss him as a fraud. What we don't get to do is turn him into something else that we're more comfortable with. But if we only ask this question in the past, then we forget the heart of our faith, which is that we are an Easter people and our belief in the resurrection. For after enduring his passion and death, Jesus was raised up by the Father. He lives forever. So we have to ask the question in the present tense. Jesus, the Son of the living God, the source of our life is asking you and me. But you, who do you say that I am? Jesus is not just some dead hero. He is our living Lord. And that's why we need, need to remember that Jesus is alive. He doesn't merely persist in, his, in our memories or in his teachings or in his example. That presence is manifest in so many ways. We are told that any act of kindness that we perform or neglect is taken as offered or withheld from Jesus. And that person to whom I offer food or drink, clothing or shelter, a listening ear, friendship and love, that person is Jesus. When we hear God's word proclaimed in our midst, it is Jesus who is speaking to us. When we come forth to receive the Eucharist, either physically as we will do today together here in church or spiritually for those who are at home, Jesus is feeding us. We are nourished not by memories of a long dead prophet or Messiah, but by the very presence of the living God. How often do we stop to think of that and experience the wonder of that? At World Youth Day 2000, Pope John Paul II invited young Catholics from all over the world to open their hearts to that vital question posed by Jesus to his disciples. Who do you say that I am? His words are powerful. 
He tells the young people, what is the meaning of this dialogue? Why does Jesus want to know what people think about him? Why does he want to know what his disciples think about him? Jesus wants his disciples to become aware of what is hidden in their own minds and hearts and to give voice to their conviction. He knows that the judgment they express will not be theirs alone. It will reveal what God has poured into their hearts by the grace of faith. This is what faith is all about, the response of the rational and free human person to the word of the living God. Then he tells them, my dear young friends, it is Jesus that you seek when you dream of happiness. He is waiting for you when nothing else you find satisfies you. He is the beauty to which you are so attracted. It is he who provokes you with the thirst for fullness that will not let you settle for compromise, who urges you to shed the masks of a false life, who reads in your hearts the most genuine choices. It is Jesus who stirs in you the desire to do something great with your lives, to follow an ideal, to refuse to be dragged down by mediocrity. He gives you the courage to commit yourself to improving yourself and society, to build a more human and fraternal world. So Jesus accepted his identity. He was the Messiah, the anointed one, the son of the living God. Now, the disciples would have seen this as a glorious and privileged and heroic role. But as we're going to hear in the gospel next Sunday, Jesus immediately reminds them that to share in his life is also to be willing to suffer, to take up your cross daily, to lay down your life for those you love. Jesus then confers upon Peter in the gospel today a great privilege, that of leading his church but he also confers on him a great responsibility to care for it and love it, to be willing to lay down his life for them. Now, obviously, Peter thought he was up to the task and told Jesus as much at the Last Supper. Even if all should fall away, Lord, I will never deny you. And we all know how that turned out. Three times, Peter denied Jesus and then depended on his mercy for Jesus lifted Peter up every time he fell and just invited him to renew his commitment to love and service. At yesterday's funeral mass for Father Bertoli, we read, in a sense, the conclusion of the Jesus Peter story. After the resurrection, in a beautiful encounter on a beach in Galilee, Jesus would ask Peter three times, Do you love me? And three times Peter would respond, almost repairing his threefold denial. Yes, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. And each time Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Throughout his life as a priest, Father Bertoli lived like Peter, this mysterious relationship of divine call and human response. He was rooted in his faithful and loving relationship with Jesus and with Mary. And Father Bertoli had learned, perhaps better than most of the priests that I've known in my life, including myself, the lesson that all those in ministry need to learn, that to be a good leader, you have to let God do the leading. And that isn't always easy. You know, sometimes when you pray with a text for many years, strange and wonderful things happen. One of the beauties of the Ignatian prayer tradition is to imaginatively, imaginatively place yourself in a gospel scene and let Jesus take over, so to speak. A friend of mine shared the experience of being on a retreat praying with this text. And at one point in the prayer, the roles shifted. She found herself asking Jesus, who do people say that I am? And then she began to hear all the messages about herself, the good, the bad, the indifferent, the external things that people commented, and all the things that she had internalized throughout her life. And then she found the courage to ask Jesus, and you, Lord, who do you say that I am? Like many of us, she had a long history of not thinking very highly of herself, of internalizing the judgments and criticisms of the world around her. But eventually the answer came back. You are my beloved, my friend, my chosen one. You are a child of the living God. Embrace the gift of who you are. 
So friends, both here in church and at home, this is your homework this week. Take a few minutes of quiet, light a candle if that helps you to focus, open the scriptures to this text, and allow Jesus to ask you these big questions. And give yourself permission to ask him the same questions in return. You may be pleasantly surprised by what you hear. Amen. Dear friends, as Christians, we respond to God's question, who do you say I am, with the words of the creed. They are who we say God is, as followers of Jesus. So let us profess together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. My dear friends, our Lord gave St. Peter the keys of the kingdom to open wide the gates of heaven to all those who come seeking God's mercy. <coughs> Let us pray now that we will keep the faith, the rock of our salvation. 
the response to the prayers is, God of hope, hear us. God of hope, hear us. That we, like Peter, receive the grace to come to truly know in the depths of our being, Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God, we pray. God of hope, hear us. That the rock on which the church was built continue to nourish, strengthen, and bring us to a deeper understanding of our faith and God's message, we pray. God of hope, hear us. As requested by Pope Francis, for those who work on the seas, that God may calm the storms and always bring them back to shore safely, we pray. God of hope, hear us. Let us walk with our brothers and sisters in the spirit of peace, and let the power of God's everlasting love be our guide in working towards justice for all, we pray. God of hope, hear us. For the sick of our parish and for those suffering from physical and mental illness, may they find help in their time of need, we pray. God of hope, hear us. For all those who have died, especially Maria Cavallaro, Father Adelchi Bertoli, and for Cornelis Clerks, Antonio Bay, Anna Federici, Leonardo Ricciardi, Adelaide Fazi Francescangeli, and Orlando and Domenica Fiori, may they joyfully awaken to a new life with our loving God, we pray. God of hope, hear us. Let us take a moment of silence now to pray for any special intentions and needs that we carry in our hearts, for all the needs of our broken world, for peace and justice, for a deeper sense of God's love in our hearts and in the world. For this we pray, God of hope, hear us. Loving God, how wonderful the riches of your wisdom and how inscrutable your ways. Hear the prayers of your people who profess faith in Christ your Son. For from him and through him and for him are all things. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. And let us now offer our gifts at the altar. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have received the bread we offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have received the wine we offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands that will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord, you gain for yourself a people by adoption through the one sacrifice offered by your Son once and for all. 
Bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, to your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, for he is the word through whom you made all things, the one you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, Jesus stretched out his hands as he endured his passion to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And now with all the angels and saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord. You are the fount of all holiness. Make holy these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice, and once more he gave you thanks and praise. He gave the cup to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for the multitude, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memory of the life of Jesus, his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. And we give you thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Christian, our bishop, and all the clergy, and all those who proclaim faith in your name. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. We pray for all those for whom this Mass is offered, and we pray in a special way for our beloved brother, Father Adelchi Bertoli. Welcome him and all of them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Peter and all the saints, and Monica, our patron, 
all those who have done your will and pleased you throughout the ages. We may become co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. My friends, we are all God's beloved children, and so we pray together in confidence and trust. Our Our Father, Father, who who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your sin we may be free, that by the help of your mercy we may be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, you say to us, you say to our world, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. My dear friends, may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And in a manner appropriate to these times, let us offer each other a sign of peace. At communion time, an usher will indicate when it is your turn to go up to receive communion. To receive the host, please extend your arms with your hands cupped open. When you have received the host in your hands, follow the arrows to the green cross on the carpet, where you may pause to lift your mask and place the host in your mouth. Please follow the arrows back to your pew while maintaining social distancing. The arrows are two meters apart. We encourage you to sanitize your hands after receiving communion. My friends, behold and see, for this is Jesus. He is the Christ, the Son of the living God. He is the Lamb who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. And may the body and blood of Christ lead us to everlasting life. For those who are viewing online, here is the prayer for spiritual communion. 
My Jesus, I believe that you are present in your word, in your church, and in a special way in the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come now spiritually into my heart. I embrace you knowing you are already there, and I unite myself wholly to you. Give me your strength, your peace, and your love. Never allow me to be separated from you. Amen. Good tidings, 
announcements, weekly registration for Mass, please follow the updates on our parish website and refer to the Eventbrite link. For those who do not have a computer or email, you can register for Mass by calling the parish office. Please leave your name and phone number on the machine. When exiting the church, observe physical distancing. Please remain in your pews until the ushers indicate your turn to leave. To avoid crowding, please proceed out to the street. Church donations can be dropped in the box in the middle aisle on your way out of the church today. Thank you for your generosity. For our prayer after communion, um, those of you who've received the prayer cards of Father Bertoli, there's a beautiful prayer from his spiritual testament. Um, I thought it'd be a nice prayer to use after communion today. Lord God, I believe in you. I love you. Grant me to love you eternally with all those for whom you wanted me to be a priest, all those I met on the path of life. Mary, dear Mother of God, Mother of all priests, Mother of all, pray for me, pray for all of us, and after this our exile. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, show unto us Jesus, your Son, our Lord and Savior. Amen. So if you didn't get a copy of the uh, prayer card, there are some at the doors of the church. Please do take one home. One of Father Bert's last requests was that we continue to pray for him, and he promised to pray for us. It's a beautiful reminder of how much he meant to all of us. I'd like to thank in a special way the, uh, our technical team today. I'd like to thank Paul, who you've probably figured out by now is my brother, even behind the mask, uh, for uh, leading us in our song today. And uh, to all of you who've joined us from home, and all the people who are working behind the scenes, the, the ushers, the... Uh, the, the the sanitation crew, the people who've welcomed you at the door. It takes many people to do this every Sunday. So thank you f to our generous volunteers, and if you'd like to help out in any way, please let us know through the parish office, um, and we will continue to uh, pray and worship together as a community. So my dear friends, let us stand and let us pray. Complete within us, O Lord, the healing work of your mercy and graciously perfect us and sustain us, so that in all things we may please you. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. My friends, the Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace and glorify the Lord with your life. Thanks be to God. And have a good week, everyone. Thank you and God bless. Now living a song of thanksgiving to God our Creator, triumphantly raised, who fashioned and made us, protected and stayed us by guiding us on the end of our days. God's banners are. Oh. Uh -huh.